Hey guys, Brad M73 here. Welcome back to Star Citizen. Uh, this time we are in version 3.1 public, and you're like, what is this big lump here next to... <laughs> what are we flying next to? This, my friends, is the brand new Aegis Reclaimer, the largest ship uh, that's currently flyable in the game, and it is all mine. Um, I'm, like, I'm gonna do a, a ship tour for you guys as well. So, um, I what what I'm gonna do? This is basically it, though. Ah, let's um, I can't tell what I'm doing here. So let's get inside and uh, let's kind of position ourselves towards the sun. And I, I want to do that for a specific reason, which I'll get into in just a moment. Let's look like directly. Try to get it directly into the sun here. Um, I'm going to hit Z just so that I can kind of pan around the outside without messing too much up here. Now, the reason why I'm doing the the demo for you, or the, the walkthrough for you guys here, is so that I won't be bothered by other players and I get a perfect frame rate when I'm in single player. So... Uh, we won't be doing any landing, but I'm going to actually try to do like a couple takeoff and landing videos uh, for you guys. And maybe I'll splice those in here um, as well, because this guy is really super impressive, um, you know, when he takes off, uh, you know, from Port Alisar or even from the surface of a planet. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, so right here in the front... I don't know. Nope, I won't be able to do that from here. But right in the front, there's kind of like this, you know, face-looking thing. It's the glass windows. <clears throat> and that's actually the cockpit. That's actually where the uh, the pilot and the claw operator, and the claw is here on the bottom, um, that's where the pilot and the claw operator uh, sit. Now, the claw isn't operational in the game just yet, but hopefully it will be maybe by the end of the year i'm not really kind of putting any money on when it's um going to be available now if you look up at the bottom and it's kind of hard to see you'll kind of see like some twinking or like some slowly pulsating lights and uh, that's actually the front elevator entrance and we can't really see it on the back but if you can see there's a set of four uh, kind of blinking navigation lights on, on the center underside. Um, that's actually where the rear elevator it actually comes down. And so we're going to actually try to uh, egress from the ship here momentarily. And, uh, and I can show you guys where all this stuff is. So let's switch back into the cockpit mode. And I'm going to stand up. Now, one of the... The things that continues to impress me about this game is the lighting engine. And, and as we can see, we've got a star out there uh, shedding some light here on the ship. Um, you can actually see my my legs. You can see the, uh, the smoke and the steam and how it kind of interacts with the light. And it looks just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, look at my my shadow on the door back here. Now, as we go back from the cockpit, we have two more stations, which are kind of mirrors e of each other. And these are going to be used for the tractor beam. So we can have people, maybe two people, um, grabbing things with the tractor beam, bringing them in closer uh, to the reclaimer so that the claw can grab it and uh, start on recycling. Now, if we go through this next door, the shadow, once again, opens up back into the, uh, the, I mean, look at that. That's just absolutely amazing. It looks like my, okay. So it looks like I have to be in this room. That's weird. Cause I'm pretty sure in the per persistent universe, the shadow goes all the way back to this back wall without us having to be in the room. But anyway, I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, this is kind of the, the area for the, I think it's the scanner. Yeah. The scanning stations and then the remote turret stations, none of which again are operational um, at this time. And also back here, this is kind of like the shredding station. So everything that you bring in 
to recycle is going to go through this. Um, I don't really know how to turn this on. I've tried and tried and tried. Um, there is a engineering station here, but I cannot get it to work. There's an arrow. Yeah, just I, I don't know yet. So hopefully, you know, in, in the next, maybe the next update, maybe 3.2, uh, more of this will be operational. I surely hope so, but um, I don't really know for sure. The lighting again in here is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, definitely has kind of like a very creepy alienist look. Um, let's see, this is the elevator going up to the main deck and actually the elevator up top right now. So we're gonna call it down. Uh, and then we also have what should be escape pods. These should be one, uh, pods one and two. And I think the rest of the escape pods are up on the upper decks. Now over on this side, uh, we have an emergency ladder. This actually goes right up to the main deck where the elevator would take you. So, you know, if you don't want to take the elevator and you want to take the ladder, then by all means. And then this door, this door, mind your step, this actually takes us outside of the ship. And we're going to see, not sure if it works when you're not on the ground. It might not actually work if you're not on the ground. Work. But essentially this comes out, yeah, I can't I can't really show you right now, but hopefully later in this uh, recording or in this episode, I'll be able to show you guys. So let's go up. The ship looks so much better at 60 frames a second. You guys are going to be seeing it at 30 frames a second because my crappy uh, <laughs> my crappy video editor does not support 60 frames a second and only supports up to 30. Um, here is the ladder that goes down to the bridge. Um, this is the gravity generator for the entire ship. So if you're like wondering, hey, how is Brad, you know, walking around on on the ship deck? Well, this is how. Somehow, you know, this thing magically creates gravity. So, yeah. Um, up here, yep, grab gen room, turret access. So in this room, and hopefully we don't get stuck on these ladders. These ladders can be a little bit buggy. Especially, oh, well, not painful at all. Especially, especially in the, um, the, the old, or the, PTU or PU, that's the Persistent Test Universe, or just Persistent Universe. Um, there is the uh, turret seat. You can actually kind of see some stars out the windows up there, which looks pretty sweet. Uh, but this is basically where the, the upper turret, which I think is the only manned turret on the Reclaimer, that's where that's gonna come down and uh, you'll be able to get into it. Again, it's not operational in this build but um, hopefully it will be in the future. Nothing really else um, in the room except for the ladder going down. I, you know, I even kind of checked these little panels here to see if maybe they were to open up these doors, but try as I might, I could not get them to open. So let's head back downstairs. <laughs> um, next up, we have the drone room which is directly across from the turret access. And again, here's the bridge access. We've got two corridors going down either side of the uh, drone room. And I think this is considered the tech, the tech level. I don't know if it says anywhere, but anyway, let's go in or we'll check this out really quick. Um, the, these two seats here are where the drone operators are gonna sit. Now you can sit down in the seats but um, all, the only thing you can do is bring up just the standard MFD displays that you see in the pilot seat. There's nothing special. The, uh, the drones are not working yet. Um, this is the drone room. So a lot of people are assuming that you're, you know, you're gonna have the drone um, on this uh, platform. There may actually be two of them. Considering there's two drone seats, there might be two drones, you know. Um, yeah, nothing up here is operational, but um, 
there's some doors up here on the top and that's you know it's assumed these will open up into the vacuum that's why this room is you know closed off from everything else so that you can actually launch the drones out into space and basically there's there's two i'm assuming these are some kind of computers maybe those are what are going to be controlling the drones i don't know i hope i can get out of here because if not i'm gonna have to completely start this darn thing over again oh no i've done it this time brad what am i gonna do Okay, well, note to self, don't do that. Don't jump down in, inside there because you won't get back out. Um, all right, so back into the tech, the tech level, tech, I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, we've got some more doors here. We've got a server room of some sort. Uh, it's like the oxygen airlock companion and oxygen mixture monitors. Um, we've got some uh, computer banks of some sort, data transmission, probably a bunch of other things. And then we also have escape pods over here. Uh, unfortunately, there are only three. So, um, Hopefully there's more on the ship somewhere. Uh, we have kind of like this little transition room here. <clears throat> yeah, here it is, the tech deck. Now this is more, this will be more of the habitation deck. So we have the docking collar. Again, the docking collar is currently in op. There's two doors on either side of the docking collar. Uh, there is the... Uh, airlock hatch for the docking collar and this basically just goes around to the other side of the docking collar and uh, this is obviously the uh, the cafeteria or the uh, kitchen uh, we've got you know microwaves there's probably a bunch of prepackaged dinners up here coffee milk beans those are probably hopefully coffee beans um, Drinking water, coffee, food storage down below. So, you know, probably a couple weeks of food storage for a standard crew there and on the other side. And it's pretty cool. You can actually uh, sit down on the uh, on the seats. It's pretty neat. Hit the H key to uh, stand up again. Hit F4 to go back into first person mode. Uh, we've got a side window here. We we can look out and the lighting is totally um let me see if i can basically in 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 these rooms the lighting is dynamic so if there are there's a star outside or even like a ship or maybe somebody's floating past and they've got their their little spotlight on the light will actually shine in here and it'll look like the lighting is you know, supposed to look. The lighting in this game is just freaking phenomenal. It truly is. Um, so moving on uh, back, we're still heading back towards the rear of the ship. Uh, we have the crew quarters here on the right and the captain's quarters on the left. And so, you know, we're, we're on the, I think it's the port side of the ship. Now, there's not, a, I, I can't find any lights in here, though we can open and close the, uh, the closets here got some beds can't actually lay down in them I don't know if I can get in Ooh, log out or exit oh, I didn't know you could do that got some more lockers here we can open and close uh, so even more I'm assuming that the eventually They'll be used for storage of some kind. Here we can look out the other side of the ship to see, uh, you know, the giant nacelles on the outside. I mean, it's just amazing how big this ship is. Unfortunately, these uh, these seats, for whatever reason, we can't actually sit down on. So 
the way that goes. Um, here we have the bathroom. So we've got some sinks, uh, some toiletries, like some sunblast body wash, dare forge, who knows what that is, probably deodorant, toilet paper, um, first aid kit, and boy, this place needs a thorough cleaning. Uh, that's pretty, pretty bad. Uh, the mirror right now is a placeholder. Um, you can definitely tell it's not 3D, looks like crap, and we can't even see our reflection, but apparently um, there's some reason why they've got that in right now. Probably memory constraints or just engine constraints here. So we've got a couple showers. We also have a couple toilets and you know, a couple burnout ceiling lights here. I'm gonna have to get somebody to re replace those. <laughs> and uh, let's head over and check out the captain's quarters. So we, we walk in, there is a, a desk and a ch captain's chair, or I don't know, just a chair on the left. Yeah, I would have kind of thought that this office kind of ready room area would probably be closer to the bridge, but I guess it's not. Uh, we also have more closet space. Um, coming around here, you know, there's just computer readouts. They don't really do anything. And then we've got these shelves behind uh, the desk. And I'm, I'm going to guess right now that eventually we're going to be able to set things on these, like purchasables or, or things that we earn in game. Um, but, you know, who knows? More food storage. Uh, another window here. And our own private bedroom and bathroom. You would think the captain would get a double bed, you know, in case the ladies, but uh, <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. All right, moving back, we come to the airlock rooms, which are on either side of the ship. And let's go ahead and just open. We'll, we'll actually go outside, kind of check out the uh, airlock or how the airlocks work. They're essentially just doors, but there's nothing special about them. You can leave all the doors open. It's not going to suck you out. Um, it's not like the space stations where you ha have to cycle the doors, but um, which I kind of like to do, but it's just not in the game yet. Uh, we also have some blue and black spacesuits here, which unfortunately we cannot use. I would love to be able to put some of those on, but alas, we cannot. They almost look cooler in the dark because they look like a really dark blue or black with just the lighting. I don't know. So we can just jump right out and fly over here to the engines where we can cook ourselves. Let's not do that. But look how small, look how small that is compared the doorway compared to the rest of the ship. Um, here we have the uh, crew quarters. And then this, I don't know where this is supposed to be. There's several windows that um, are, are closed off here. Um, up on the top, we have the, uh, this is the airlock for that, uh, you know, it goes in next to the cafeteria. And then Moving forward here, I think it's, yeah, right here where it says drone. These are the doors that open up so that the drones come out. If we fly around towards the front of the ship, we've got, this is beautiful. We've got um, the turret. We've got, this is the pilot and ball operator seats. Watch the shadow. Very cool. Um, let's go up and check the top turret out. Very cool. But this, and this is the the largest turret that I've seen in the game yet, which is pretty. Whoops, which is pretty sweet. Um, let's see. I wonder what planet we're over. 
It's Earth. No. Or maybe it is Earth. We don't know, actually. So we are directly in front. I think these round things, these might be the tractor beam emitters. Who knows? Doesn't say. I'm just guessing. Or it could be these things right here. Actually, these things might be the tractor beam emitters. That look more like a tractor beam emitter? I think it might be. Maybe we can find some writing on it. It says, tractor beams. Then again, maybe we can't. Uh, we've got the gigantic claw down here. The claw! And the uh, gigantic arms. Now, I wonder if we can get in. Now, here's see where it says personnel right here? This is the door. Yeah, I can't get in there. I, I guess you can only open this door when the reclaimer is on the ground, which is kind of a shame, but that's all right. Um, you would usually just see it almost looks like a light that's projected below it down to the ground and you'd see kind of like this round circle on the ground. You just need to kind of stand near the round circle and um, and then it, you can, you know, it'll kind of turn orange and you'll be able to select it. And get inside some of the uh, bits and bobs of the ship here, which is pretty cool. And again, here we have the um, cafeteria. I almost wish I had somebody to play this with. They could fly past and you look at the look at the lighting. Super cool. And here's the airlock door on the opposite side. And see we've got i think there is there a turret up here i know there's one on the bot yeah here's a turret back here not really too much to look at on the back of the ship and we've got a turret on either side in the back pretty much so all your bases are covered Here's the other turtle over there. Um, I'm gonna guess this is probably where, you know, a, a machine like this would drop off its salvage, giant salvage doors. As far as I know, there's not a way to open them. Whether or not they'll be openable in the future, I have no idea. Um, right here is the um, call lift button or call elevator. We can actually access that and the elevator will come down to, to greet us and say hello. But we need to go and we need to close up the airlock. So let's fly up to the airlock really quick. <clears throat> and just fly right in. Going through the airlock um, when you're on a persistent server, can be a little bit tricky <clears throat> because there are different gravity states uh, when you're playing with other people compared to just solo. So, yep. Uh, and then here is the elevator. I mean, elevator shaft kind of goes straight down from here. Now we have to call it back up to us. Someday. There we go. And we can go up and check out all the different decks. So first, at the very top is the salvage balcony. We're actually going up from the habitation deck. And this is the salvage balcony. And there's nothing at all to do in here. A funny story, and I'll try to remember to put some screenshots into this video. 
Um, I was actually playing in the, the PTU, the Persistent Test Universe, the other day, and I had somebody ramming the back of my ship so hard that they glitched through and inside here with a freelancer. So I actually have pictures of a freelancer in down in the salvage hold and uh and uh, and even the uh the player was still in it he couldn't get out of the ship he was probably mad so uh we've already been to the habitation deck let's go down to salvage processing there's the salvage there's uh habitation i guess this is salvage processing And it's pretty dark on this level, but there's not really anything in here to get excited about. Um, I, I would imagine most of the stuff that's going to go on here is mainly going to just be... How, how do I even say it? It's probably just going to be automatic or automated. Uh, we can probably jump down here if we want. Whee! Um, now we're in this, I think this is like the salvage storage level. And then I don't know, it almost looks like this goes down or can go up. Um, I don't see any like elevator controls or anything like that. So I don't know how this is going to work, but this is basically more salvage storage here. So let's go up all the elevator down. So let's go down to the cargo hold. Wait, what did I click on? I thought I clicked on the cargo hold. Oh, the deck we were on was the salvage hold. That's what that's called. So there's the salvage hold and then there's the cargo hold. So there's the salvage, salvage hold right there and the cargo hold. And this is, as far as I know, this is the lowest deck on the ship especially here in the back. Kind of dark in here, so we'll turn the light on and it's unfortunately kind of hay, you know, misty, very moist in here. But um, this is it. I can't remember exactly how much cargo this ship holds. I want to say it's 180 um, standard cargo units or SCUs, but I'm not 100,000% sure. And if we go down all the way to the surface. There we have, there we're outside, so. And this is how, I personally wouldn't normally get in this way. I would actually uh, use the front elevator to get in because you're not going to have to walk all the way through the entire ship and go, you know, you're not going to have to go all the way up this elevator. And then, I mean, you could go back, go back to when I first came up the elevator, time it for yourself. Um, you know, it's going to take a while to get all the way through the ship where you can just run right up, get into the, uh, the smaller elevator. So we have to take this elevator down. <clears throat> when we would normally just pop out right here and be in the uh, in the uh, cockpit. Well, guys, that's pretty much that. Pretty much sums everything up as far as what to look forward to in the Reclaimer. I believe it is still on sale. Uh, it's four hundred dollars uh, with in-store credit or 350 war bond that means the war bond is if you're buying it in a straight outright with cash uh 350 us dollars um prices in euros and pounds and other currencies uh are uh, quite a bit different um uh, pretty expensive I, I think it's close to 500 dollars in 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 pounds um you know if you were to convert the pound rate into um 
into U.S. dollars, but um, hey, in your pounds, so I don't know. But you know, it it doesn't really do that much right now. Uh, but it's a really cool ship, and hopefully, down the line someday in the future, it'll be a huge money maker. One can hope. But right now, it's more of I, I kind of hate to say it. In a way, it's kind of a status symbol in the game because it's like, hey, I've got the most, you know, the biggest ship right now. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't really see it that way. I, I wanted it just because I wanted, a you know, something different. And I wanted a big, cool-looking ship. And I, this is it. This is something that you can take your friends along and go on an adventure and hopefully make some money in the game. And, um... Play some Star Citizen. But guys, that is the Aegis Reclaimer. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Leave a like. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the Reclaimer. And if you haven't done so, please sub subscribe for this and many more videos. More Star Citizen, more of a lot of things. Guys, I'm Bradham73, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.